All right, so welcome, one and all, to a very unusual thing that I never thought I would do, but here I am doing it. So if you're just joining us, or if you're watching this posted on YouTube, I, I've got a Patreon request from one Mr. Leaf Blady, and the Patreon request, the $50 tiers to request pretty much any kind of show, Normally, it's it people just request the shows that I already make, but I leave it open to be like, hey, if you want me to do something unique or different, I'm open to ideas. And Leaf Blady wanted me to read one of their fan fictions. It's called uh, Magia Clash, Mitakashi's Golden Girl vs. The White Devil. You can find it on Archive of Our Own. <laughs> I'll go ahead and post the link down in the description, assuming this is on, on YouTube. For the people on Twitch, if you want to go ahead and post the link, Leaf Blady, people can, can read along. And I'm just going to do my best to do an audio performance of this. I'm not sure how good it'll be. I can't speak to the quality of my voice actormanship, but I got paid to do a job and I'm going to try to my best. And, you know, maybe this will be popular. Maybe people will like it. If they do, let me know. I will certainly try to do it again. And before I start this, I should say that I have a very, very cursory knowledge of Madoka Magica. I, I heard someone review it once. Uh, I have no idea what this other show is about. Uh, I also don't speak Japanese very well. I will do my best with pronunciation, but I'm, I don't know Japanese very well. So there we go. And no, I'm not going to be doing any kawaii girl voices. Without further ado, Magia Clash, Mitaki, Mataki Hara's Golden Girl vs. The White Devil by Leaf Blady. Mataki Hara City. It felt so strange compared to her hometown of Uminari. Many of the buildings and structures here were built like an unholy mismatch between art and technology. A glass elevator with an interactive holographic display a fountain that used light to change the colors its spraying water shone with, among many other things. Even to Nanoa, someone with constant exposure to alien technology, this place felt more foreign to her than any of her previous experiences. Well, maybe that was a bit of an overstatement. It still had buildings and shapes that would be considered made by humans. However, it felt so close to something made by humans, yet not quite close enough, invoking that uncanny feeling that was more upsetting than seeing something solely inhuman. Though the citizens here seemed to treat it quite naturally, maybe this feeling would fade if Nanoa did some sightseeing and familiarized herself with the place. However, with her job here, it was unlikely she'd have the free time to do so. If fate had been here, she might have had an excuse to take her time on a date with her. But she was still with Chrono, Lindy, and Yuno at her trial. They were still fighting hard so that fate wouldn't be punished, so she shouldn't be slacking on her mission here. Wait, where am I? Nanoa had been wandering around lost in her thoughts for about a minute, so she was surprised to see she had somehow wandered down an alleyway. Any other city would likely have her turn her way back out of an alleyway, yet somehow even this place looked oddly inviting through its architecture. Focus, Nanoa thought. This was a relatively simple mission. She should get it over with quickly so she could get back before dinner. Her mom said she was going to cook something, and Nanoa didn't want to miss that. Wait. Focus, Nanoa thought again. A shiver ran up Nanoa's spine. She could tell it wasn't from the prospect. Something wicked was in the air, and it likely had something to do with the mission she had received. Rising heart set up! Nanoa was surrounded in a bright pink light as her clothes disappeared, and her barrier jacket formed in place of them. Similarly, Rising Heart transformed from her compact standby form into her signature staff, ready to fight by her side against any evil that might appear. Doubt began to creep as she took in her surroundings again. Nothing appeared out of the ordinary. Could she have been wrong? No, there was no way around it. She knew what she sensed, and she still sensed it now. 
As Nanoa took in her surroundings again, she caught a glimpse of a shimmer in the air. Looking closer, it seemed to widen, encompassing more space. Then another rip in space appeared behind her. Vibrant colors were bursting forth, contrasting greatly against the more monotone alleyway. Soon, though, Nanoa couldn't even see said alleyway, as her environment morphed and shifted into something else. Nanoa stayed alert, ready for any sneak attack that might come her way. As the area around her completed its transformation, Nanoa saw that she was in a closed room made entirely of cotton. There were random decorations strewn about, and those too were made of white fluff. The only thing out of place was the door in front of her, which appeared to be made out of wood, just like a regular door. Rising Heart, do you know what's going on? It appears we have been brought into someone else's barrier, Rising Heart replied. That seemed to be correct, as Nanoa took into account the space that had warped around her. But this barrier seemed quite different than her own, having created a space entirely different than one they had previously occupied. She wasn't quite equipped to answer that question, though. So the best course of action was to leave this place. Nanoa opened the door in front of her and was greeted by a sight outside her comprehension. A creature and one that Nanoa couldn't really ascribe to any one animal either. At first glance, it appeared to be a sheep covered in wool. As she looked closer, though, she saw things didn't quite fit. Fangs, claws, a more lanky tail... However, what really threw Nanoa off her ground was that it didn't seem to belong in this world. She had fought many monsters, but they all looked like things that physically existed. This creature, on the other hand, it didn't even look like it was made of flesh and blood. It invoked a similar uncanny effect as that of Mitakihari City. The creature bared its teeth as it gave a guttural snarl. This barrier will prevent any damage to the area we were previously in, correct? Yes, my master, Rising Heart answered. Then I don't need to hold back. The creature's bark had been much worse than its bite, Nanoa found, as space began to warp back to normal around her. It had been about as difficult as the creature created by the jewel seeds, and Nanoa was long past the point to fighting creatures of that caliber. As the creature faded away, something that dropped from its body grabbed Nanoa's attention. Stepping closer, she could see it was the item she had been sent to find, a black orb with two needle-like protrusions on opposite ends. Nanoa could feel a strange energy contained within it, one that could undoubtedly be used to create great harm if used maliciously. Clack, clack, clack. The sound of school shoes against the pavement brought Nanoa away from her thoughts, and to the view of a blonde-haired girl with a cheery smile. You can take the grief seed if you like, but please leave this city now. The disconnect between the girl's expression and her words caused Nanoa to tense up slightly, which she chided herself for. Even if this girl had power, she was clearly in civilian mode. But despite that, the girl exuded a sense of experience and maturity that had been missing from most of the adults she had interacted with, one that Nanoa couldn't help but be wary of. Who are you? Mami Tamoe, resident magical girl of Mitakihara City. I don't appreciate other magical girls strolling through my territory, but I'm willing to overlook this as just an honest mistake if you leave now. Nanoa couldn't leave, though. This girl seemed to know about this grief seed she had been assigned to learn about. What's more, Nanoa could see the loneliness in her eyes. It reminded her so much of fate. I'm Nanoa Takimachi. I'm afraid I can't leave. Please, let's talk about this, Nanoa requested. There's nothing to talk about here. If you want to keep operating here, you'll have to take Mitakihara from me. Mami said with a snap of her fingers. But I don't see that happening. Nanoa opened her mouth to respond, only to be cut off by a flash of yellow next to her face. By the time she noticed it, it was too late. 
The shining yellow light illuminated her front and sides in the dark alleyway. Their brightness was so overwhelming that Nanoa could barely make out the fact that they were not one continuous stream of light, but rather separate streams of what appeared to be ribbons. Nanoa flew back in a desperate attempt to escape the ribbons, but they had already formed a tunnel that stretched far behind her and were closing in. Nanoa didn't understand how this had happened. There were no runes, no signs of mad device usage, yet somehow Mami had used a binding spell on her with a simple snap of her fingers. The ribbons were mere centimeters from constricting her body, and Nanoa knew her bindings were all but inevitable. As they pressed down upon her body, attempting to halt her flight backwards, Nanoa received a welcome surprise as the bindings were deflected by the spells that made up her barrier jacket. Nanoa increased her velocity backwards, escaping the tunnel of ribbons and breathed a sigh of relief, only to be greeted by a bullet flying straight at her. Nanoa was unable to increase her speed further or even change her direction because of the alleyway. An ascent upwards would be impossible flying backwards like this as well. Nanoa couldn't help but close her eyes in the face of the inevitable. The bullet made contact for the briefest of moments, then whizzed on by. It had only been a light graze, not even as deep as a paper cut. Had it not been for the trail of warm blood slowly trickling down her cheek, she would have questioned if she'd even been hit. That was a warning shot. If you understand our difference in experience, then please leave now. Nanoa's nerves tensed up as she took in the sight before her. Mami had put her on the defensive right from the start, and what's more, she hadn't even noticed her transformation into magical armor. In contrast to Nanoa's, her outfit appeared lighter like fates. She most likely fought similarly too, relying on her speed to overwhelm the opponent discarding the ability to take a hit in favor of not getting hit. A part of Nanoa told her she should leave, but that look in Mami's eyes compelled her to stay. Nanoa reached, raising heart in front of her, summoned a temporal space field to cover the area they were in. Mami seemed a bit confused by the changes as she took in her new surroundings, so Nanoa decided to explain. I know that sometimes clashing is avoidable, so I made this barrier so we can let it all out. I hope we can truly talk to one another after this. That sounds agreeable, Mommy said, but I'll warn you now, I could never lose. This young girl had been rather impertinent, waltzing through another magical girl's territory as if she owned the place. Given her younger age, Mommy would have chalked it up to inexperience any other day of the week but she had seen the way she handedly dealt with that witch. There was no way this girl was new to this role. She was at least as strong as Kyoko. As Mami sized up Nanoa, she couldn't help but wonder how she had escaped her storm of ribbons. Her ribbons had aided her well in fending off many upstart magical girls from taking her territory with nary a bullet fired. Her ribbons had weak sheer strength though, so she could understand if Nanoa had cut them with some type of bladed weapon. However, her staff seemed to offer no such utility. What's more, Mami could tell her ribbons had been repelled by some type of magic. Mami couldn't see how she had used her magic to do so, but she'd used it in such a brief period of time that catching her off guard was an unlikely scenario. Especially now that she would be expecting it. A shame. Her ribbons would have ended this conflict much faster for her and Nanoa. The safe move would be to keep the current distance between them and figure a strategy from there. Mami summoned a volley of muskets and took aim at Nanoa. Divine shooter, Nanoa cried. Five spheres of light formed before, then shot forth as beams of light. As her bullets met with the beams, the former were instantly vaporized. Mami suppressed a shock at the sight and pirouetted into a backflip over the beams, expecting them to fly off beneath her. Mami was further surprised to see them curve up to follow her. A homing attack? Thinking quickly, Mami summoned another volley of guns, only for them to be hit by the lasers and explode beneath her. 
The force sent Mommy flying further back, but it had achieved what she wanted. As she saw the beams of light fly high into the air and dissipate, Mommy's feet hit the ground as she skidded to a halt. Nanoa didn't let Mommy regain her composure as she flew at her full force. Mommy was ready, though, and summoned a gun up from her sleeve the instant before Nanoa reached her. With a breakneck upswing, Mami's musket struck the tip of Rising Heart, sending her spinning high into the air. Rising Heart, Nanoa cried, unable to stop her forward momentum. She crashed into Mami, who intercepted Nanoa's hands with her own. The two now locked palm to palm as Nanoa pushed Mami back, her speed threatening to snap her legs out from under her. Mommy summoned further rows upon rows of musket around her and Nanoa. She fired, only to be disappointed as she saw bullet after bullet bounce right off Nanoa's vest. Not letting herself be discouraged, though, she continued to fire without relent until the gun smoke made it impossible to see her foe. But she knew it wasn't over, as she could still feel Nanoa continue to push her back and into the ground. They had been pushed out of the alleyway and into the vacant streets of the city. Suddenly the force on Mami relented and the smoke cleared, with Nanoa nowhere to be seen. Mami looked around her, but couldn't find a single trace of Nanoa. She had used the gun smoke as cover to escape her sight. What's worse, it seemed it had done nothing to damage her. A voice rang out from above. Divine... Mami finally located who it was she was searching for, and was further shocked to see her flying above the city rooftops, rising heart back in her hands. Buster! A beam larger than the previous ones fired forth. With hardly a moment to spare, Mami summoned a wall of ribbons to intercept the attack. The beam bored itself at least halfway through the wall upon impact, incinerating layer after layer of ribbons. Mami made more threads to further reinforce the wall, but it was apparent to her that this was a losing battle. Mami changed course and refocused her ribbon wall into a V-shape in front of her. The attack split along its vertex and slid against both sides of the wall past her. Rather than facing it head on, it would be easier to try to move with it, though this proved to be a double-edged sword. As Mommy focused a further reinforcing of the focal point on her wall, the two sides became more and more scorched by Nanoa's attack, and eventually let way earlier than she had wanted. The split attack hit the ground, detonating to her left and right, the smoke billowing up so thick Mommy couldn't see a single centimeter in front of her. Hell, she could hardly believe she was alive. Her clothes had several tears and rips in them from the debris that had been kicked up around her. Taking a single step forward, Mommy paused as she realized her foot was not landing on solid ground, or well, any ground at all. Forming a line of ribbon with her magic, Mommy unspooled it like a tape measure to find the distance between the patch of ground she stood upon and the nearest bit of road. Mommy was getting increasingly worried the longer it moved out, and could hardly hold her shock as the ribbon finally reached level ground. Over ten meters, Mommy gulped. This girl had left a crater in the road with a radius of over ten meters. I need to know how far out the smoke cloud reaches. Mommy shot another ribbon with such much greater velocity, clearing her first in a fraction of the time. Finally, at a distance of thirty meters out, she could feel it be vaporized instantly by Nanoa's attack. What's more, the attack had to come from above. Mommy could hardly believe that either. Mommy had thought such a large attack might drain her. That had to be at least as powerful as her Tiro finale, and Mommy had to train for years to get the attack to consume a reasonable amount of energy that would make it useful outside of finishing blows. Yet somehow this girl was still aloft in the air and able to fire attacks at full power. This girl either had more experience than her appearances led on, or was one of those irregularities QB had talked about. This was going to be an uphill battle. Mami wasn't sure if she could win it, if that last attack had hit her. Mami felt a strong vibration. Looking down, she only saw her hands shaking. No, if I start thinking like that, I've already lost. 
I have to think about what advantages I have over her. If Nanoa had more experience than Mami, she knew this battle would have been settled already. So she was going to have to fight smarter, not harder, if she wanted to win. The smoke was starting to clear like a ticking clock pressuring her to formulate a plan before it blared out its alarm. Diplomacy was out of the question. Not only had she rejected it earlier, Mami couldn't handle being betrayed and lied to again. Every time she had relented to other magical girls, tried to hear them out and worked with them, they had gone against her wishes. They abandoned their duty of fighting familiars for their own interests, and there was no guarantee this girl wouldn't do the same. She needed to end this fight on her own terms. Think, there must be some way to defeat her. The smoke began to lighten around her. She only had so long to come up with a strategy before it cleared entirely. That staff seems unique. It was able, it was even able to talk. If I remove it from her grasp, I don't think she'll be able to summon another one, like I'm able to with my muskets. In addition, despite the great strength and speed, her actual physical combat seems rather basic, and she seems to favor long-ranged attacks. I need to close the distance and make sure it stays closed. This would be a big risk, though. With the greater distance, she wouldn't have nearly as much time to dodge. One mistake and Mami might be dead before she even realized it. However, the war of attrition was definitely off the table. She needed to end this quickly. Finally, I need to deal with that. How she repelled my ribbons. They're my best bet for incapacitating her. Their earlier clash had given her a hint of how she'd done it. But most of Mami's plan, she realized, was based off assumptions. If even one of them were wrong, it would most certainly spell her defeat. However, she didn't have time to question it further. It was either this or nothing. The last billows of smoke finally cleared away, and Mommy was ready to fight this head on. Nanoa was a bit taken aback. This had been one of the strangest fights she had ever been in since becoming a mage. Granted, she had started out just shy of a year ago, but she'd seen her fair share of combat and saved the city from multiple threats. Mommy's magical versatility was clearly no joke. That binding spell at the beginning of the fight would most certainly have caught her if her barrier jacket failed to repel it. Whatever Nanoa went on, whenever Nanoa went on the offensive, Mommy seemed to have an optimal response, whether by using her weapons to intercept her homing attacks, knocking rising heart from her hands with a perfectly timed swing, pelting her with a barrage of bullets while she rushed her down, and then modifying her barrier to prevent her attack from consuming her. But in spite of those brilliant maneuvers, Nanoa could feel the desperation in each and every one of them. This girl's experience is not of a mage who has honed their craft to perfection, but rather of someone who has survived many years of combat through any means necessary. Nanoa had been going all out because she assumed the former, but if it was the latter, Nanoa feared she might seriously harm Mommy if she continued at this rate. Even if her attacks were non-lethal, mana damage could lead to major physical consequences if used to great effect. While Mami's reflexes and instincts were on a higher level than her own, and likely even fates as well, her overall mana output appeared weaker than them both. This was a bad combination for Nanoa, as her focus on making her attacks non-lethal could be the difference between her hitting Mami or not but it could also be the difference between Mami needed a week in the hospital and... Nanoa didn't finish that thought, though. Mami's latest strategy with her ribbons, which she had completely fallen for as much as she hated to admit it, all but confirmed this theory to Nanoa. This caution was a level reserved for someone who couldn't afford a single mistake. As the smoke finally began to dissipate, Nanoa felt she should make slight adjustments to her level of force. Nanoa compressed her mana into the form of a bullet in front of her, and with the first sight of yellow, she made her move. Shoot bullet, Nanoa yelled. Nanoa's magic burst forth right on target to hit Mami. Bullet was her weakest spell, but she didn't need to exert nearly as much effort for a non-lethal variant, making it faster to fire in comparison. This made it all the more surprising when Mami dodged it with a slight lean to her left, not the least bit phased. Nanoa shot another bullet, which Mami dodged again with a slight lean in the opposite direction, not even fully lo looking at her. Nanoa was a kind girl, 
but even she was a bit annoyed by, by Mami's attitude. She decided to fire the next one at her legs to force Mami to move. With a small leap to her left, Mami avoided Nanoa's attack without issue. Maybe I'm going a bit too easy, Nanoa thought. She decided to do more rapid firing of her bullet spell. Mami continued to effortlessly dodge Nanoa's attack with acrobatic flips and somersaults, but this was all according to her plan. As Mami settled into her rhythm of dodging, Nanoa formed a stronger variant of her bullet spell with her other hand and continued to lead her prey into the trap. Using her rapid-fire bullet spell, she had been pushing Mami further and further towards the building walls, and knowing her path, Nanoa fired her charge spell to intercept Mami as she was about to land a flipped. But Mami never touched the ground, having used a ribbon to swing upwards from a streetlight. Nanoa continued her barrage of bullet spells to try and shoot Mami down, but even as the distance closed between them and Nanoa was sure the next volley would pick Mami out of the sky, the blonde would just shoot another ribbon to pull herself out of harm's way at the last second. Wait, she's closing the distance? Nanoa thought. This was rather surprising given their clear difference in power. She assumed Mami would want the extra room to keep dodging her attacks, but it seems she was pressing to go on the offensive. Nanoa continued to fire her spell as Mami maneuvered between her attacks with the grace and elegance of a ballerina. Anytime Nanoa thought she had Mami cornered, she'd fire a ribbon from her arm, front, or even her back to pull her out of danger. She continued to swing up and forward, eventually coming within 10 meters of Nanoa. Nanoa was hovering slightly above building level, thinking any further up would just give Mami more time to dodge her attacks. But that had left her within Mami's range. She considered flying further up before a realization struck. Mami's plan hadn't been in vain. She had been worrying about a possible homing attack hitting her as she swung up, but it hadn't come. Now, within just a few meters of Nanoa, she'd been able to strike a deciding blow. Mami's ribbon pulled her to the top corner of a building. She gathered her magic in her legs for when she landed. Flawless legs of gold! Mami's legs propelled her forth with the power of her own muskets by expelling that force against the top corner of the building, which crumbled beneath her. Mami wasn't just flying straight at Nanoa, she had also given her legs a slight twist as she launched forward, causing her to spin faster and faster as she closed in on Nanoa. Even while spinning, Mami could see Nanoa raise her weapon and knew she had just realized her greatest weakness in her plan. With no walls to latch onto immediately available to, she was a sitting duck. She was a sitting flying duck in the air. Thankfully, Mami had planned for this eventuality and summoned her musket. Timing it carefully, she fired just as Nanoa did. The force of the bullet fired to the left, causing her to move ever so slightly in the opposite direction. Nanoa's attack still hit her, skimming the side of her waist and taking a sizable chunk of flesh with it, causing Mami to rotate even faster. The smell of searing skin was overpowering, made worse as she felt lightheaded from the increased centrifugal accelerations, but Mami grinned and bared it. Nanoa's shock at this maneuver, combined with Mami's increased speed, left her wide open as the latter finally unleashed her attack. Flawless Legs of Gold Finale! <laughs> Focusing the power of her Tiro Finale into her right leg, Mami delivered a spinning wheel kick into Nanoa's side. At this close range, it should have been over, but Mami could feel a strong resistance preventing the full force of her attack from coming through. With Nanoa unable to focus her magic on flying, both she and Mami fell to the ground, Mami's shin still firmly pressed into Nanoa's ribcage. Mami continued to pour more magic into her leg to try to overwhelm Nanoa's magic, but it became obvious this wasn't going to work. Her legging began to smolder from all the energy she was collecting there, and eventually caught fire. Now worried about her wardrobe malfunction, Mami couldn't help but think about how Nanoa's outfit had nary a scratch on it. That's when she realized the truth, right as her leg exploded. The explosion unstruck the two, sending Nanoa careening into the ground head first without a moment to react. Mami, meanwhile, had been shot upwards, giving her more time to land properly. 
As Nanoa crashed into the ground, leaving a small crater where she landed, Mami fired a bullet at the ground, causing her to slow her descent again with a bit of upward momentum. With outstretched hands, she finally touched the ground for just an instant before using her hands as springs to flip herself upright. She then summoned her musket one last time as she landed on her left foot and used it as a crutch to steady herself. Her right leg was so mangled by her reckless attack that it couldn't even reach the floor. If Mummy wasn't suppressing the pain, there was no doubt she'd crumple over, unable to think about walking, let alone fighting. She wondered if it was over. Considering the speed at which she hit the ground, that attack should have knocked her out at the very least. Of course, though, life would never be that easy on her, as Nanoa stood up from the crater, looking no worse for wear. It was no bother, though. Mami still had a plan. She'd chide any student of hers who would replicate the suicidal fighting style of allowing yourself to be hurt because you couldn't feel the pain. But she couldn't think of any other way to win this fight. Despite Mami's attacks containing a notable level of grace to them, Nanoa couldn't help but be reminded of a cornered animal. Prey are weaker than predators, and often because of this, they take the choice of flight over fight. But when running became impossible and with nothing left to lose, it was not uncommon for these cornered animals to gain an immense strength to fight off their attacker, risking life and limb to do so. As she raised herself up from the crater and caught view of Mami's right leg, the sight was almost too much for her to bear. Mami's leg was covered in first to third degree burns, with the most intense burns clearly indicating the point of contact it made with Nanoa's now broken ribs. Nanoa's wince turned to a surprise as she saw a soft, flowery glow surrounding Mami's legs. The burns started to lessen severity as her right leg spasmed back into a functioning state. Healing magic? Nanoa questioned out loud. I'm guessing you don't have any, Mami replied. Nanoa kept her mouth shut, realizing her mistake. I'll give you a fair bit of warning because of your slip-up. Don't take to the skies unless you're ready to be flayed by my ribbons. Nanoa gazed up and saw the light of the sun reflected in various spots off the shining thread overhead. When had she... Realization struck. The ribbons were in the areas Mami had been as she leapt from building to building in pursuit of her. Mami had thought even further ahead than she realized, and Nanoa had been too complacent. She thought she could escape by the air whenever she needed, and now Mami had cut off her greatest advantage from her. Nanoa's sight returned to the ground, only to be greeted by a flash of yellow in front of her. When fighting, you should be wary not to take your eyes off your opponent, Mami chided. Mami struck the butt of her gun at Nanoa's face, with Nanoa barely bringing Rising Hearth forth to block it, stopping it mere centimeters from striking the left side of her head. Why did she close the distance? Doesn't she use guns? Nanoa doubled up, feeling a sharp pain in the side where her barrier jacket was damaged, before being knocked back diagonally. As Nanoa flew headfirst, she could see Mami's foot return to the ground with seamless grace. It made sense now. Her versatility in close-range combat exceeded hers, so she was taking this up close and personal, even if it meant less time to dodge her attacks. Nanoa took aim with her rising heart and fired while still in midair, but Mami had already closed the distance and pushed rising heart aside with one hand before she even realized it. Nanoa's beam sliced right through a building, causing its top half to fall and crash into the building next to it. Since Nanoa had it anchored herself with her magic before firing the attack, she flew back from Mami's grasp at an increased velocity. Mommy fired her musket bullet at Nanoa, but a slight tilt of her head let it whiz by into the building behind her. Nanoa's feet hit the ground unsteadily, but she kept her balance. She had no choice. Mommy would punish her further if she gave her a single opportunity to do so. Unfortunately, the time needed to steady herself was already being capitalized by Mami, who had closed the distance yet again. Mommy's strikes were unpredictable, kicking with her legs, swinging with her guns, combined with her spins for good measure. Nanoa could never tell where the next attack would come from until it was about to hit her. She owed her continued resistance to her brother and sister, who taught her kendo, but that was barely enough to put up a defensive front. 
The close quarters combat also proved doubly detrimental for Nanoa's attacks. Due to Mami's closeness to her, she had no room to maneuver Rising Heart to fire an attack at her assailant. Anytime she made a sudden move back to do so, Mami was prepared to push, kick, or hit Rising Heart out of the way. Her beams had cut through several buildings and left long gashes in the road beneath them, but they hadn't come within half a meter of Mami's body. Mami had been constantly pushing her back, and soon her back would literally be against the wall. She had to press back while she still could. With a kick from Mami to Nanoa's right, she did the unexpected and abandoned her kendo stance, pulling her right arm aside to block Mami's attack. Nanoa extended her left arm to the side and twisted her wrist to angle rising heart at Mami. But as she fired, Mami bent her entire body back, playing limbo with the deadliest limbo stick in existence. Nanoa didn't even notice the two muskets she summoned from under her skirt, until the bullets hit her square in the chest, knocking the wind out of her. But Mami didn't let her get knocked back too far, summoning a ribbon that ensnared her wrist beneath her barrier jacket. Nanoa felt like a rag doll as her initial momentum backwards and the force Mami exerted with the ribbons in opposite direction caused her limbs to fly in every direction. Nanoa heard a pop. Her left shoulder had been dislocated. Before she could even register the pain, though, a sharp kick from Mami to her forearm was met with a resounding crunch as her leg exploded upon contact again. The pain of it all caused time to move in slow motion for Nanoa. From her now useless left arm releasing Rising Heart from its grasp, to Mami's leg leaving a smoke cloud surrounding her arm, healed up as if nothing had happened. And though she couldn't hear it, she could tell she was screaming as tears welled up in her eyes. Her scream escaped her lips with greater velocity than Mami's kick to her arm. The pitch and volume of the cry was now filled with the ferocity of a wounded animal, causing Mami's primal instincts to take over and jump back in fear of Nanoa's possible retaliation. Nanoa's right arm shot forth, grabbing Rising Heart before she hit the ground, as she fired an attack without anchoring herself with her magic. She hadn't intended to, but this ended up working out far better for her, as the force of the attack caused her to rocket back with intense speed. With this, she could escape. She could escape the ribbons that lay overhead. She could fly high into the sky and... Nano's train of thought and momentum backwards came to a simultaneous screeching stop. An invisible force pulled hard on her left arm. Looking in the direction of it, Nanoa could see a thin thread between her arm and a bullet hole Mami had left in a building just a moment ago. She had planned this far ahead? As Nanoa gazed at Mami in utter disbelief, she could see her grip her hand tight in the air. With that command, the ribbon suspended in the air descended upon Nanoa, sneaking underneath her barrier jacket all across her body, all while pulling her into the sky. She had reached where she had desired to be, though this was not how she wished to return. Mommy's hand shook, this time trembling in relief and not just panic. She had achieved it. Nanoa was now strung up in the sky. Unfortunately, she hadn't been able to bind her arms and legs together due to her outfit's special properties. But with this many ribbons tethered between her limbs and the building, Mami had no doubt Nanoa would be unable to escape. Please, let's just talk- No! Mami interjected. You're too dangerous to stay alive. To have this much power, how many girls must you have fought? How many grief seeds do you have to burn? Nanoa's look of bewilderment was lost on Mami. If I let you go, what's to stop you from just killing me? I... I wouldn't do that, Nanoa cried out. I have no reason to trust your word. You refused to leave my city earlier. Your attacks were more than enough to kill me twice over. Why should I trust that you care about my safety? Nanoa's head hung low, entirely dejected. Mommy did much the same as she wondered what she was truly going to do. She hadn't even thought of the words she had just said, just not wanting Nanoa to take control of even a conversation in this fight. Was she really going to kill this girl? She had been in fights with several magical girls before, and even when they fought to kill her, she never sought to kill them. But the difference here was obvious. None of them were stronger than her. If she let them go, they might try again, but Mami knew the results would be no different. This girl was stronger than her. It wasn't even a contest. 
She would never use the level of attack she used here against other magical girls. Some she wouldn't even think to use on a witch itself. If Nanoa gained even more experience, no, just the knowledge of Mammy's magical arsenal would be more than enough. Mami let out a breath of air she hadn't even known she'd been holding. Her decision was clear. Channeling her magic, she summoned rows upon rows of muskets. Numbering in the hundreds, they thoroughly littered the sky. With a swing of her arm, they fired in sequence, their combined light burning as bright as the sun. As the hail of bullets descended upon Nanoa, she could only tense up to endure the pain as they pelted her body, ricocheting in every direction. Mommy summoned her ribbons as a shield to protect herself from any stray bullet that might take aim at her. The sparks and smoke from the bullets raining down upon Nanoa blocked her from Mami's vision, but still the bullets kept hitting their mark. Finally, the last of her guns fired, the storm of bullets subsided, and the smoke cleared. Mommy felt it wouldn't be enough, but it still hurt to see Nanoa up there in the sky, her outfit shredded but not looking much worse for wear. What's worse, the way her bullets had ricocheted, several of the threads had been frayed or outright severed. With her right arm, Nanoa made a punching motion while shouting, Bind! Break! With that motion, she tore through most of the ribbons still attached to her, even pulling chunks of the wall to which a few stubborn ribbons were tethered, straight out of the building. She then took aim at Mami's blast shield with the intent to pierce right through it. Had this all been for nothing but a damaged outfit? Wait, her outfit's damaged? Her despair had temporarily blinded her to the truth that she had already achieved what she needed to. With that, her final course of action became clear. Nanoa had taken aim at the ribbon blast shield, ready to tear through it with her attack, only for it to dissipate before she could. This confused Nanoa greatly, but not wanting to lose this chance, she cast a binding spell to ensnare Mami's leg. Mami's agility and acrobatics had been her greatest asset in this fight. With those sealed, maybe she'd finally stop and listen to her. I see you've caught me, Mami replied coolly, but that isn't going to stop me. With that, she summoned a gigantic cannon in front of her and prepared to deal a great deal of magical energy. I'm going to end this with my next attack. Nanoa's confusion grew even further. It was clear Mommy had been weaker than her. Why would she think she could overpower her now? Still, those eyes, those lonely eyes, they shined with such confidence that Nanoa had no choice but to believe her. Gather, shimmer of stars! Nanoa gathered all the energy that had been expended during their fight into an orb beneath her. For some reason, it was much less than what she expected, about half in fact. Why wasn't she able to collect the mana Mammy had expended? It might just be the case that Mammy had found a way to gather her own mana before Nanoa tried to. Her bag of tricks during this fight certainly left that as a possibility in Nanoa's mind. But the idea that she had performed mana conversion on such a wide scale without a device or some kind of identifiable trigger left her doubtful. The other possibility, which seemed ludicrous to even entertain, was that Mommy did not actually use mana. While many of her techniques were certainly replicatable with advanced spell design, the sheer quantity of such specialized high-level spells would require more time than she had even lived on this earth. Just what was Mommy? As she looked down upon Mami for an answer, her confident eyes still gleaming, Nanoa couldn't help but see it as a facade. Not to hide her lack of strength, but the loneliness she had seen in her. She could tell she fought with a great sense of pride, but during this fight her moves betrayed her desperation to win, to survive on her own. Had Nanoa's strength frightened her? Was she still making mistakes as she prepared her final attack? No, Mami needed to be truly overwhelmed to have her spirit crushed. Unless she did that, she would be unable to shatter whatever had hardened Mommy's heart so completely. Only then could she be conceived that her mistrust was not needed. Her heart resolved. She focused her own mana into Starlight Breaker. Though Mami looked straight up at Nanoa, she tried to keep her mind from thinking about her. Seeing the only thing in her line of sight, her Tiro Finale Cannon, she couldn't help but think how it reflected her. 
a strong, imposing figure that was crafted from weak ribbons. These ribbons, no matter how she molded or reshaped them, they were still the same as they'd always been. She used them to ensnare those who opposed her, who opposed what's right. Though she knew the truth, they were just chains that tethered her to the ground, shackles that she repurposed into the weapons for her life. She may swing above the city with them, but eventually she will return to the ground, back to her cell, a life of penance for the mistake of a stupid young girl. That girl, she flies so freely in the sky, is it because nothing weighs on her heart as it does hers, or... Mami shook her head. This was exactly what she wanted to avoid. These thoughts would get her nowhere. Mami and Nanoa felt their attacks reach the apex of their powers, both ready to end this fight once and for all. Tiro finale! Starlight Breaker! The attacks exploded forth from their master's weapons with a thunderous roar, the glow of pink and yellow complementing the setting sun behind them. Barreling forward towards one another for an intimate clash in the sky that never came to be. Nanoa gasped in surprise as Mami looked up in resignation. The projectiles had passed each other with nary a graze between them and were on target to hit the magical girls instead. Nanoa released Mami's binds as she flew back, but with her mana all but spent, she could do nothing but shield herself with her arms as the attack consumed her. The releasing of her bind had done nothing for Mami, as she crumpled to the ground. Looking upon the brilliant peak beam in awe and terror, it incinerated her in an instant, leaving not a single trace of the weak ribbons that comprised her behind. Everything had gone according to plan. Mami had won. The explosion in the sky brought forth a large cloud of smoke from which Nanoa spewed forth like a baseball out of a pitching machine. Falling towards the ground like a meteorite, she crashed into the asphalt for the second time today, leaving a crater at least twice the size of her last. The winds knocked entirely out of her body. Nanoa couldn't even wheeze or cry out in pain, despite it consuming her entire body. Her arms scorched, her ears ringing, her back sore in spots she didn't even know she had. She was alive, but she could not say the same for Mami. She had released her binding spell in the hopes that Mami would be able to escape, but as she fell from the sky, she clearly saw her silhouette evaporate within her starlight breaker. She hadn't fired a non-lethal variant. She had been prepared to help her for as long as needed should she suffer any physical or mental damage from her attack as an apology to her but it seemed there was no way she would be able to hear it now. Nanoa felt a great pain in her heart. Had she truly been unable to save her, despite all her efforts? Nanoa had trusted the confident look in Mami's eyes. Had she been mistaken? Was it not of someone resolute in their path to victory, but rather that of someone accepting their own demise? Why had she trusted someone who had been through so much pain? Who would be willing to let it all go if they had an excuse to do so? Clack, clack, clack. Nanoa was broken away from her thoughts as the ringing in her ears cleared, and the familiar clicking of heels came into sound. Nanoa's hope pushed her sadness away as she craned her neck back to see the edge of the crater behind her. Mommy came into view at the edge of the crater, not a scratch to be seen on her. She jumped down and slid towards Nanoa, her rifle at the ready. Mami, you're okay, Nanoa cried, relieved. Mommy stopped on a dime at the zenith of the crater, her expression confused. Tears began to form in her eyes as she fully processed what Nanoa said. Why was she expressing concern over her well-being? What are you saying? You can't trick me. You just want my territory. You were willing to kill me over it, Mami claimed. I didn't want to fight you, and I certainly didn't want to kill you, Nanoa spat out between labored breaths. In fact, I wanted to help you. You seemed so alone. Mami felt a conflict inside herself, her desire to be saved by someone from her loneliness, but also her desire to not be hurt by someone again. It tore and ravaged through Mami's mind, and then her body as she knelt over in pain. Her soul gem! She had expended so much energy during this fight, 
and with her worsening mood it had darkened an incredible amount. She reached for a grief seed, bringing it up to her soul gem to purify it, only to drop it from her shaking hands. Writhing in pain, she wondered if she might be dying. She wasn't sure what happened when a soul gem fully darkened. Just when she thought she could no longer bear the pain, though, it subsided. Looking over, she saw Nanoa smiling weakly, holding a grief seed up to Mummy's soul gem before collapsing to the ground, no longer breathing. She had crawled over to Mommy with just one arm and even used her own grief seed to purify Mummy's soul gem. Mommy knelt over Nanoa's body as an I'm so sorry escaped her lips. No, I can't just be sorry. I need to fix this, Mommy reproached herself. Mummy held her shaking hand steady in front of Nanoa's bruised body, using her magic to heal her wounds as fast as she could. Nanoa's burns, bruises, and scars slowly began to fade, all while the color returned to her cheeks. Still, it wasn't enough. Focusing her magic on her lungs, Mami continued to pour magic into Nanoa. Please don't die. I don't want to lose someone else because of my selfishness. Nanoa convulsed as her breath finally returned, her eyes fluttering open. Thank you, Nanoa uttered. Mami could barely even hear her as she continued to pour magic into the healing the rest of Nanoa's body. Mami, that, that's enough. No, it's not enough until you're full, Mami fell to the side, ready to hit the ground, only to be caught by Nanoa's shoulder. Nanoa winced in pain, her wounds not fully healed, but she knew it would have hurt her worse to not help Mami. I'm sorry for being so weak, Mami whimpered. Nonsense, Nanoa replied. It takes a lot of strength to recognize your wrongs and want to fix them. Mommy readjusted herself so that her and Nanoa were supporting each other's weight while leaning against one another, and Nanoa wouldn't be carrying the entire burden. They sat like this for a moment, not a word between them. Nanoa had said she wanted to talk earlier, but it was hard to find the words after all that had gone down. Mommy felt like she'd lived a lifetime in these last few minutes. Thankfully, Mommy decided to break the ice. I have no right to ask, but what did you wish for? Nanoa was confused by her wording. Did she mean what she wished for while fighting? I guess that I fight because I wish to protect that which must be protected. Mommy stared off in the distance. I only wish to protect myself because I was afraid to die. Nanoa felt saddened to hear this. How harsh must her life have been to simply just want to live? Nanoa pulled her head away to look Mami in the eyes. There's nothing wrong with simply wishing to live. Mami teared up one final time before embracing Nanoa and crying into her shoulder. Staring into her red hair, she couldn't help but get the feeling that she should try and reconnect to an old friend. Nanoa patted her on the back soothingly, Content to have another friend to introduce fate to when she made it back from her trial. The end. Da -da -da -da. We made it. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. Nicely done. I tried my best. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 